The best Linux laptops make running the open source operating system smooth and seamless. These are our top rated laptops with Linux pre configured and pre installed. Our team of reviewers have tested the best Linux PCs, mini computers, and laptops, and reviewed all the best Linux distros for when you want to move away from Windows and Mac OS. And while you can install the alternative OS onto almost any laptop for best performance and results, we recommend a laptop with Linux already installed, built for the task, and ready to go. As part of our testing process, we compared customizations and configurations, port availability, storage capacity, and screen display options. We also made sure each of them is capable of running top distros like Ubuntu, so they're guaranteed to run the open-source OS out of the box, without you needing to tinker with systems and settings. We have listed the best laptop for Linux in 2024, and there are key features you need to consider this to help you choose the best one for you. For more information on the product, as always, I've included a link in the description box down below, which are updated with the best prices on each product. Like the video, comment, and don't forget to subscribe. Be sure to stay tuned till the end so you don't miss anything. Now let's get started. Number 5 Dell XPS 15 2024 Last year's Dell XPS 15 9520 left a lot to live up to, and the new 2024 edition of the flagship desktop replacement rises to the challenge with Intel 13th generation and NVIDIA GeForce RTX 40 series silicon. The XPS 15 model 9530 starts at $1,999, $2,499 as tested, keeps its predecessor's premium metal and carbon fiber design and gorgeous edge-to-edge -edge display, while its new internals drive up performance potential, albeit a bit more on the processing than graphics side. Our test unit is outfitted with a vibrant OLED touchscreen, as well as a potent GeForce RTX 4070 GPU for demanding professional workloads and after-hours gaming. All this, plus a reasonable starting price and plenty of configuration options, make the revised Dell XPS 15 one of the best and most flexible Lux laptops for a range of audiences, earning it our Editor's Choice Award in the desktop replacement segment. By now, Dell's XPS design language is the farthest thing from new to me, though I've seen many more laptops than most folks. It's truly a matter of if it ain't broke, don't fix it. With high-end styling that's become familiar in 13 and 17 inch, as well as 15 inch sizes, the XPS 15 again gets its premium look and feel and price from an all aluminum exterior. The Dell's sleek physical design helps too. Measuring just 0.71 by 13.6 by 9.1 inches, HWD, it's seriously compact for a 15.6 inch laptop. I'd forgive you for thinking the screen was smaller than that at first glance. The system is still reasonably portable at 4.2 pounds. Number 4. Dell XPS 13 Plus 2023 What do you call the flagship of a flagship? A year ago, Dell introduced an even more premium version of its legendary ultra-portable, the Dell XPS 13. The first Dell XPS 13 Plus flaunted an edge-to-edge -edge keyboard with elegant LED function keys and an invisible touchpad. Today's second-generation XPS 13 Plus, model 9320, starts at 1,199, 1,499 as tested, is the same slick design with a 13th generation Intel processor and a spiffy OLED screen. It's a flashy status symbol, but its lack of ports and battery life keep it from toppling the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Carbon Gen 11 and HP Pavilion Plus 14 as our editor's choice holders. Available in silvery platinum or dark gray graphite machined aluminum, the XPS 13 Plus is one of the most attractive laptops you can buy. The bezels around the 13.4-inch display are ultra-thin, with Dell citing a 91.9% screen-to-body ratio. Meanwhile, the palm rest is a single pane of glass with no lines or buttons to mark the touchpad, and the Zero Lattice keyboard has no spacing between its slightly enlarged keys. Plus, the top row of function keys is absent. In its place is a capacitive touch strip with glowing LEDs that show volume, brightness, microphone mute, and other controls. Pressing F and plus S toggles them to F1 through F12, as on many laptops. Number 3. Lenovo Yoga 6 Gen 8 
Visually, Lenovo's Yoga 6 definitely stands out due to its color-accentuated, fabric-covered display lid. The mobile Ryzen 7 also earns some plus points, not only offering high performance but also fitting almost perfectly into the elegant convertible thanks to other features. The Lenovo Yoga 6, now in its eighth generation, has a lot to offer. The combination of tablet and notebook is aimed at creative minds, who not only want to tackle graphic tasks with ambition, but also want slightly upmarket equipment for the home. The good, though by no means outstanding 1610 display, the practical Lenovo Digitizer Pen, unfortunately not included, and convincing system performance fit this bill. In addition to the variant we reviewed with its AMD Ryzen 7 7730U and 16 GDB of RAM, a smaller model with an AMD Ryzen 5 7530U is also available. With this, 8GB or 16GB of RAM can be selected. Experience has shown that 16GB is advisable, despite the overly high surcharge. Otherwise, you can only configure the software, accessories, and the material of the display lid. With the relatively new and, above all, fast processor from AMD, the Yoga 6 is definitely able to compete with a Dell Inspiron 147420, if not surpass it. At the same time, the Lenovo IdeaPad Flex 7 with the same Intel Core i7-1255U is an interesting alternative, although it is no longer on par with AMD's mobility-tuned Ryzen CPU. Number 2. Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Carbon Gen 11 The Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Carbon G11 is the first model of this line with up to 64GB of RAM. To get this amount of RAM, users have to buy a version with the most powerful P28 CPU, the i7 1970P. Unfortunately, as our review shows, this CPU is ill-suited for this elegant business laptop. Among the Lenovo ThinkPad laptops, the ThinkPad X1 Carbon is without a doubt one of the most well-known models. The flagship of the series since 2012, the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Carbon G11 is already the 11th generation of this Ultrabook-type device, which targets the top end of the enterprise market. This is a device companies will buy for managers and CEOs. We already reviewed the ThinkPad X1 Carbon Gen 11 in a very common variant with a U15 processor and WWXGA screen. Today, we are testing a much more uncommon model variation of this device, which includes the top-of-the-line Raptor Lake P28 CPU, the maximum amount of RAM for this model, as well as the most expensive screen option. This is the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Carbon G11 in its maximum configuration. We have already reviewed the design of the ThinkPad X1 Carbon G11 in detail before. In short, the design remains unchanged compared with the ThinkPad X1 Carbon G9 and X1 Carbon G10 which came before. This is a high-quality device with a very lightweight and compact chassis made out of carbon fiber and magnesium, clad in the typical rubberized ThinkPad black paint. Number 1. System76 Darter Pro For about a month now, I have been using the new System76 Darter Pro laptop. Unfortunately, my 4-year-old System76 Oryx Pro took a dive off a table and smashed its screen. My company graciously provided a replacement. I chose the Darter Pro because I wanted to get away from having a dedicated GPU. I had hardly used the GPU in my old laptop at all. I also knew I wanted to keep with a 15-inch screen as my wife's 14-inch screen seemed too small. The Darter Pro fit into my requirements nicely and System76 was about to release the latest revision soon after I started looking. The very first thing I did when I received the laptop was to replace the default Ubuntu install with a Kubuntu install. This was a very smooth experience because I installed everything via Ansible. Eventually, I will write a post about my Ansible setup and publish the paybooks. However, the one glaring issue during the setup process was that the touchpad was disabled. This made it very difficult to complete the OS installation process. I only used the keyboard and sometimes the order of the tabbing was unexpected. The partitioning was particularly difficult to do with only a keyboard. 